So today I just want to give you some considerations when working with clients in this kind of post-injury state. And in this context, when I'm talking about post-injury, I'm talking about an area where they've potentially had tissue damage in this kind of early acute stage. They might have gone away, worked with a therapist, had some time away from the gym. And then they're in this, what I like to call grey area, where they feel like they've recovered a little bit, but they don't know quite how to get back into their full movement patterns. They don't know quite know how to get their strength developed as fast as possible. They're a little bit nervous. So now it's our job as a coach to have a little bit of an understanding in how we can educate these individuals and how we can help these individuals get back to full fitness and strength as quick as possible. So I'm going to give you a few considerations and then at the end I'm going to give you a couple of tips and take home points that you can use with your clients. So first of all, let's realise when someone's in this sort of post-injury state that their tissue may remain sensitive for quite a long period of time. And just because the tissue might remain sensitive, it doesn't mean that someone is doing damage to the tissue. Because pain can be regulated for so many different factors at the end of the day. And it isn't just a dictator of what's going on with the tissue. So these tissues might remain sensitive. They might, be, they might take a long time to kind of die down. Pain may be triggered just generally a little bit more easier. So if we can start to appreciate that, and educate people with that and start to make them feel a bit more confident with their movements, that'd be a really fantastic place to start. Because the brain is such a big contributing factor to helping these people. Because what we tend to see is people in this state can quite often go on to develop kind of chronic issues where pain continues to come back and they have these niggling body parts for months and months or sometimes years. And that's because the brain can be altered. The brain could be altered in its belief systems post-injury. Its emotions, memories, they can all be changed. So if we can start to educate, which I'm always talking about, and we can start to understand ourselves as coaches a little bit about pain, we could really start that journey to helping people recover a lot quicker. Let's realise that we can see a lot of people who have become quite maladaptive long term. So what I mean by that is their body's made a lot of compensations with their movement, even though the injury itself has calmed down. So if we can learn to look at clients and learn to appreciate they might become maladaptive, we can start to try and, I suppose, recalibrate how the body works and in turn recalibrate pain to help them progress a lot quicker. So the first tip I can give you would be to keep them relaxed. We know a lot of people will come in post-injury and get into kind of grey area state and they're still quite tense and quite anxious. Some of it might be quite easy to see, some of it might be quite, quite subconscious. But by keeping someone relaxed and make sure they feel confident in what you're doing as a coach is probably the best thing you can do first of all. Next thing then to sort of uh, move forward from this point would be just to build some confidence by starting small. You know, really sort of presenting movement in a quite easy, non-threatening way could be a great way to sort of move someone forward pretty quickly. Think of it like this, our goal is to try and change the sensory input. So what I mean by that, if we can change how we present movement to our clients, this could be a really good tool to helping someone move forward a lot, lot quicker. So let's give you an example. Someone might feel quite threatened with a squat when they're in this kind of grey area and this sort of post-injury state. So if I can tweak the squat a little bit, I can play about with it so it doesn't trigger sensitivity, doesn't trigger pain, this could be a really good place to start. So I can play about with different drivers. So I might be able to put my feet in a slightly different position potentially, maybe a little bit wider, might be nice for people in, uh, with knee pain. Maybe reach the arms out in front. Could be a nice way to kind of load up the hips more than the knee, something I've talked about many times before. I can make it a bit more task focused if needed. So as I get into squat, I could get into sort of reach for some, an object maybe in a, in a box or an object out in front of them from the floor. Ultimately, it just comes down to this, guys. It's playing about and tweaking movement. It's probably one of the best skills and the best tools you can use to help your clients. So our goal is to present movement in a less threatening way. Our goal is to recalibrate pain. I think if you can get some basic understanding of this, you're going to allow those clients in that post-injury grey area state recover and get back to their full movements and strength training a lot quicker.